Hello friends, I am Om and today we are going to see which one is a better NES distribution Ubuntu 24.04 or Fedora 40 So let's get started Without going into the differences of these distros, let's see what are the similarities between them. Both of these distros are powered by latest of the greatest Linux kernel 6.8, providing support of Intel Iris XE graphics and Raspberry Pi 5. Going ahead, both of these distros are powered by latest KD Plasma 6 and GNU 46 desktops. And I don't think so, I have to revise again what are the new features of them. But still, let's have a recap. GNOME 46 introduces a range of improvements for a more polished and user-friendly experience. Nautilus File Manager integrates a global search function, allowing users to locate files across the system. And now the notifications provide more information and better organization for a clearer overview. And a new system panel in settings, which is related to religion and language, and simplifying system configurations is there. And the settings app undergoes a reorganization of a more intuitive layout, making it easier to find specific settings. And GNOME 46 benefits from performance tweaks, including reducing memory usage and smoother animations. Talk about KD Plasma 6 that it brings significant visual and functional refresh to the desktop environment. Here are some key features of it. Plasma 6 prioritizes Valiant, which is a modern display server offering a smooth graphics and better security as compared to the traditional X11. And the panel by default adopts a floating design, providing more flexibility in customizations and potentially enhancing usability. And the task switcher offers a graded thumbnail view, making it easier to identify and manage open applications. The Breeze theme receives an overhaul featuring visual refinements and potentially improving aesthetics. And Plasma 6 introduces a built-in support for color blindness correction filters catering to users with visual needs. Now let's move ahead to the individual updates, starting with Ubuntu, a new revamped app store. The familiar software center has been replaced with an app center featuring a more streamlined design and potentially improving software discovery. And the desktop installer boasts a more user-friendly interface, simplifying the installation process, especially for dual booting scenarios. And now let's move ahead to the differences of these distributions and comparing them based on the overviews, starting with the release cycle. As you know, it is an LTS release in Ubuntu, which has a release cycle of every two years, while in Fedora, it's a usual release, which gets an update every six months. As we know, Ubuntu uses Debian packages, and hence it uses APT Package Manager, which is seen as a stable and better performing package manager. And Debian has the largest package software repository. While in terms of Fedora, then Fedora uses RPM packages, and hence it uses DNF package manager, which is known for speed and performance. And in my opinion, Ubuntu focuses on ease of use, stability, and beginner-friendly desktop experience while Fedora focuses on innovation, leading its software, catering to developers' enthusiasts. As speaking about enthusiasts, then Ubuntu's target audience are the beginners who are switching from Windows or Mac OS to Linux, and those people who want to use Linux in their day-to-day -day life. While Fedora's target audience is those people who are Linux enthusiasts, or developers, coders, or power users, or professionals. And not to forget, gamers. And now let's look at software availability. Both Ubuntu and Fedora have a vast software repository, but Ubuntu's repositories may have some more user-friendly packages and a relatively large number of packages. And talk about stability, then Ubuntu is a very stable Linux distro and especially due to its LTS focus. While Fedora is also stable, but with a potential for occasional bugs due to frequent updates. And there ends our comparison. So in my opinion, both of these distributions are really great, targeting a very different kind of audience and Linux users. So let's say if you are a Linux beginner or a person who wants to use Linux in the day-to-day -day life, Ubuntu might be a choice, or I suggest opting for Ubuntu-based Linux distributions. While if you're a power user or a professional, or a developer or a gamer, then I suggest Fedora or Fedora based Linux distributions and talk about power. I've not heard about Arch this week. I wonder what's happening. Well, I'll tell you too in the next video. But for that, you must subscribe for weekly dose of awesomeness content uploaded on this channel. And I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, I'm home, signing out.